بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ مائی ڈیئر سسٹرز اینڈ برادرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سو وی آر اسپیکنگ آن ٹاپک آف یونیٹی ان ڈائیورسٹی اینڈ آئی بین اسائن ٹو اسپیک آن a subtopic of that which is listening to people's voices. Now, um, so I have a trick question, which is, are you going to hear me what I'm saying, or are you going to listen to me what I'm saying? Listen to me what I'm saying. So what is the difference between hearing and listening? That is the key question, and I think that is where this conversation needs to start. And most of the time we hear people, we, especially when, you, when we are in a, uh, a conversation, when we are attending programs, and it reminds me a few years back, I was at one of the conventions like that, a conference like that, and there was one very popular speaker speaking, and after his speech was done, I was standing right outside the door, and a young man comes out very hyped up. And he comes to me and he says, Brother Naeem, did you listen to the speech? And I said, no, I'm sorry, I was you know, outside, I was taking care of a few things. And then he said, it was amazing, it was wonderful, out of this world. So I asked him, so tell me, what did you get out of the speech? Tell me a couple of things. And subhanAllah, he just looked up like this. And then after a few moments, he said, I forgot. So what happened to this young man? He was there. He was uh, probably taken by the overall presentation and style and maybe a few jokes and a few comments here and there. So it, it it touched his emotions and he was hearing all this different vibes that he was getting from the speech, but he did not get what the speaker was saying, what the message was. He was not able to comprehend or take it. So most of the time, unfortunately, we hear, which are just vibrations. If you're only sitting here hearing, you're just, these are sound waves that are coming to our ears and, and then either staying or leaving, making a wind tunnel. But listening on the other side is an aspect of actively paying attention. So listening is, is, a, is, a, is an act of participation in the conversation. So when we sit and we listen, and that's why mo our mothers don't say, are you hearing me? Mothers say, are you listening to me, right? So are you paying attention? Are you listening to what I'm saying? And this is where it is important for us that when we speak on this topic and when it comes to conversations and we are, when it comes to paying attention to the conversations, when it comes to listening to what the other person is saying and trying to understand that, it is an active participation. It is giving attention not only to the person looking into the eyes of the individual, but at the same time trying to understand from his or her perspective. So a few years ago, again, again, a convention story. We were in Cleveland, Ohio. And, uh, you know, it was a much smaller convention, alhamdulillah, but it was very good. And one of, a, a good friend of mine uh, from Cleveland at that time, African-American, I saw him coming towards me and he didn't look happy. So he, he comes to me and says, Brother Naeem, I have a problem. I said, sure. He said, one of the brothers who's responsible for the bazaar, he told me that you people are the problem. So now I was also shocked. I said, because I know this brother that he was talking about. 
And he said, these are the words of a white man. I told him, I, I know that this brother is not like that, but let us go. So we go and we meet this brother. And you know, I asked him what happened. He said, oh, there was some issue with the table. At Bazaar, it happens all the time, by the way, that some vendor will want to take more space than what they are assigned. But anyways, so this brother said, I asked him, what did you say to him? And he said, yeah, I said to you people. So I told him, what did you mean by saying that? Tell me in Urdu, what did you mean when you said you people? So because in Urdu, if some of you speak Urdu language, it is commonly used in when conversation, aap log, which is out of respect. Now, this brother who had a whole different culture and his brother was completely different, and the experience of his life were completely different. That's why he said these, those were the words of the white man. And he did not expect from a Muslim brother using those words and those term, that kind of terminology. So he took it very personally, but this brother on that side didn't understand why it made him so angry and upset. And I think that is where the understanding of the cultures come in. That is where this act of why this person is saying it and what is his or her background, her, his or her experiences, which are making him to say these things and how can I understand those words better? So that is a challenge for us when it comes to listening to others, listening to and paying attention to others. Learning from their experiences, learning from the challenges and, and, and uh, brought up that the person was raised in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets some standards for us when we talk about believers and unity among believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets us the standard of believers as mu'mineen, right? Believers. M calling each and every one of us believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd Believing men and believing women. What are they to one another? They are awliya of one another. They are protectors of one another. They are caretakers of one another. They have love and affection because of their faith. They take care of each other and they value each and every one because of their faith. And this is what makes us believers. This is what makes us innam al mu'minuna ikhwa. That believers are what? But brothers and sisters. This is what connects us. Our faith connects us and builds this relationship which makes us protectors of one another, builds this relationship which is beyond race and color and background and what we eat and what we do not eat. This is what believers are. Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets the standard for us that wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliyahu ba'd that we are towards one another protectors. It is beyond any relationship. It is beyond saying just salam to one another, which is, again, a sadaqah to one another, but it is beyond that. It is knowing the challenges. It is knowing the difficulties. It is knowing what my brother Khalid is going through and his family is going through. That is the relationship that we must have. And my brothers and sisters, when we are sitting here on this stage, this is exactly how I feel my brothers and sisters here and I feel for all of you and, and I'm sure you must feel for me. That our relationship is based upon our love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that binds us together. There is no other relationship. My daughters are sitting here. This is a biological relationship. But with all of you my relationship is beyond that. It is because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is because we say, La ilaha illallah. It is because we say, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu It is because we say that we are followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi That brings us together. That binds us together. That makes us all ya of one another. If there is that gap in this relationship, if our iman is weak, if our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak, then this relationship also becomes weaker. It affects this relationship. 
And that is the challenge that we see globally all over, that if we are 1.8 billion, where are these 1.8 billion? If we say there are seven or eight, 10 million Muslims in America, where are we in America? So the challenges are that we probably are not listening to one another. And that listening has to start. That phase of sitting and just listening has to start. And by the way, now there are groups who are doing nothing, but they, do, they promote listening exercises. They say that, OK, if you have problems in your community, start a listening session. Just sit with people and let us talk and let us listen to one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat reminds us not only believers but the whole humanity. Inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa unsa wa ji'alnaakum shi'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum indallahi alimun khabir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us all into this beautiful nation, this beautiful humanity where all of us sitting here, we come from different backgrounds, different air, different families, different cultures, different colors, different shades. It is all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what makes us better? What makes us what in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that who created is who is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the other. Who has a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Race, language, color, ethnicity, wealth, gender, does not matter. It has no meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is important in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that how good of a relationship with, we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are here in this world, when we are sent here for a few numbers of years, how do we live our life in this world? Is it in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And in doing so, what kind of life are we going to live remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our affairs. My brothers and sisters, I recently joined Dar al Hijra Islamic Center. And one of the things that I learned from the community that there are 37 or more languages spoken at Dar al Hijra or the community that, is, that belongs to Dar al Hijra speaks. A few years ago, at one of the ICNA convention, we did a survey. And in the survey, when normally we ask, how was the conference? What do you like? What you didn't like? And there was one question we also asked. What other language you speak at home other than English language? And the results really surprised us that almost 44 different languages, people said that they speak. People who were here at the, con at the convention. I'm pretty sure that number has increased. Muslim community in America, according to some surveys, we represent over 80 different ethnicities of Muslims. This is the beauty of American Muslim community. We have brothers and sisters who were brought here by force. We have brothers and sisters who came here by choice. We have among us Muslim brothers and sisters who had to leave their lands and their countries and their homes because of the persecution and injustices that are happening. But all of it makes us Muslims in America, American Muslim community. We have different socioeconomic you know, levels in the community. We have Islamic centers that have budget of six or seven million dollars. And we have masajid which are still struggling to pay their rent or to pay for the utility bills. So you have all kinds of variations in the community. Our Dar al Hijra Islamic Center on Juma, we have three prayers and we have over total of over 3,500 Muslims 
who come here, come to Dar al-Hijrah for Jum'ah. Adam Center that I live near also has three Jum'ahs and they also probably have more than 2,500 or so people. And then where we have Masajid where there are even hard to get 25 people. So this is the beauty of American Muslim community. We have all kinds of places of big and small, medium, large Masajid and communities. But what we need to do and what we need to start looking into is having this listening sessions among ourselves, paying attention to one another, listening to one another, learning from each other, each one's experiences, and then coming up with a dialogue, coming up with a conversation that can help us, each and every one of us, to improve of a relationship with one another. There are several ways that we can look into. When we look at the seerah of Rasulullah that one of the aspect of the seerah that we learn is that Prophet was a person who would pay attention to what the person is saying. Prophet never shook his hand like this and looked the other way. If someone was talking to him, he would completely turn to him and pay attention to. We encourage different aspects of seerah, but this is an aspect of seerah that we must also learn and, and, and practice, giving full attention to one another. In the, among the companions of Rasulullah companions were rich and poor. Companions came from different backgrounds, different ethnicities. But all of them felt that Prophet ﷺ was closer to them. He loved them. He took care of them. And there are many examples in the seerah that we learn. Our unity in diversity. This is the beauty of American Muslim community. It is not a weakness. This diversity is not a weakness. It is a strength of American Muslim community. And we must build upon this strength. And how do we build upon this strength is by, by learning of the experiences of the community who was brought here by force and the challenges that they face and the enslavement that they experienced. Connecting with that community. As a Muslim in America, even though I was not at that time. I did not come from that part of the world. But we must develop this relationship with that history of Islam in America. This is our history. This is not only Brother Khalid's or his ancestors history. It is our history. It is a history of Islam when we talk about enslavement of Muslims who were brought here from Africa. This is our history history of American Muslim community. In the Sharia, you know, one of the uh, scholars have come up with this, this aspect when we talk about maqasid al Sharia, which are the, the deen, nafs, mal, aql, and nas. This is what we are bound to protect. This is what we are made to make sure that each and every one of us has the strength and the ability to protect and experience this for one another. Muslims in America are one of the most diverse community. We have not only different ethnicities, but we also have different fiqh that we practice. Growing up in Pakistan, I never saw any person standing next to me and praying with his hands down. But in America, yes, there is someone who will stand next to you with, with not holding his, his, or his hands up like that. So there is diversity in the way we practice our deen. And that is also a beauty of our deen. And this is where my brothers and sisters, that I said before, that this diversity is our strength. But the challenge is starting to pay attention 
and listening to one another. There are challenges. It is not going to be an easy process, and it is not. Because there are experiences that our African-American Muslim community went through, still going through. There are experiences that overall in the society that we see. There are issues of poverty. There are issues of racism. There are issues of still the larger segment of the society putting Muslim community, seeing Muslim community in a certain way. So there are these challenges for us. But for us, the process to start this conversation is paying attention and starting to listen to one another. According to some experts in the field of communication, they say that when a speaker, when a person talks, the one that who's listening, about 20 to 30 percent of what they're hearing is not being understood properly. So keep that in mind as well. That yes, it gets lost in translation sometimes. It gets lost in the air sometimes. But the more we will come and sit with one another, I think that gap will slowly and slowly reduce. And then will make us bunyanum marsos, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.